Okay. So I want to play with piecewise functions for a little bit. Do you have ask me for us again? Wow. You did this to me last semester and I don't. Okay. Sorry. I, I should understand this more. Uh, so Gabe asked you earlier, are these two-part things or something? And the answer is yes. The or something being relatively critical. Okay. So piecewise is a funny word, but literally just means piecewise, as in in pieces. So these are functions in pieces. We have shorthand for a couple of these, this one being the one you see most. So let's talk about a of x is the absolute value of x. I think you guys usually know how this thing works, right? Yes? OK, so I'm getting at least a couple of these from you guys, like this thing, <laughs> right? So why, how, tell me. It's just how far it is from zero. Okay, so all this thing does is return how far is the input from zero, right? Okay, so for positive things, what's the answer to that question? Whatever it was when you stuck it in. Yeah, just whatever the thing was. So what's the function you guys have that takes whatever you give it and gives it back? So what's the function where the output is the input? X equals X. Yeah, X, right? Okay, so this side over here is this side over here is just X. Right? What about this side? Negative F of X. Yeah, so remember these inputs over here are already <laughs> negative, right? And this thing gives you the kind of positive version of a negative number. <coughs> so how do, make, how do you make a negative number into a positive number? Slap an extra negative sign on it, right? So over here, this thing is minus x. And what is it at zero? Zero. Which could be either of these. You guys see that? So you get to pick what you do with like which piece zero is in. But for me, it's pretty clear that there's like this piece over here and that piece over there. You guys see that? So I'm going to write this thing in the kind of more general piecewise way. So I'm going to go like this and make one big curly brace. And then I'm going to list my pieces in here. So my two pieces of this function are x and minus x. And then what's missing here? So I told you what the rules, what the rule is on the pieces. What else do I need to tell you? Yeah, perfect. Where the pieces apply, right? So what the domain of each part is. So what's the, which axis does x apply to? Yeah, the positive x's, right? So x is bigger than zero. <coughs> and usually these are written as inequalities, not intervals. Okay. How about minus x? Where does minus x apply? When x is less than zero. <coughs> and then what do you need to deal with? Zero. So there's three ways you could deal with zero. You could put another line in here, right? So you could do this. <coughs> that would be a little bit, like that would be fine. What else could you do? Stick a line underneath one of the two. Yeah, or you could slap an equal sign under one of these. The traditional is to slap an equal sign under the top one, so that's what I'm going to do here. But any of those three options would create a function that's exactly the same that actually is the usual absolute value function. You guys cool with this? Questions, concerns, things? Uh, how bad would people's brains explode if you put the line under both of them? Uh, don't do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the pieces have to be disjoint domains. Mm -hmm. So really, you shouldn't overlap them. It probably is OK to overlap them as long as the function output agrees. But traditionally, we don't do that. Cool. Like, this is to avoid the gumball machine effect, right? Function just can't be a gumball machine. Mm -hmm. And so if, that, if these two rules acted differently at zero, and I underlined both of them, then I wouldn't know what the heck to do with zero. It wouldn't be a function. Right. So it's really just to protect functionality that we require them to be disjoint. Questions, concerns, thing? But that's really just a convention. Uh, what are these good for? So there's this one that you guys know and probably love, right? Probably, maybe, don't love. But what else do piecewise functions do? Like what else do they model? Like what are they good for? Why was this interesting? How could this happen in real life? For anything that would never be able to happen. Yeah, I might use the absolute value in some kind of everyday situations. But when does piecewise in general happen? Like what's the thing that's happening here that's different than our usual? So far, usually we assume some kind of consistency in the system, like it always acts the same way. But that's not really ever true. You guys want a like everyday example? Maybe <coughs> everyday. So when somebody jumps out of a plane, a parachute, right? There's kind of three states, right? So little fellow is falling, right? Yeah, they're falling under the influence of gravity, yeah? And so I'm going to graph their velocity as a function of time. So at first, they're zero velocity, right? And then they're going to be going faster, yeah? So they're getting some kind of a faster, right? Then what happens? Peak out. Yeah, you peak out, you hit terminal velocity, right? Mm -hmm. So that's this. Then what happens? Then you hit the ground, and velocity goes quickly to zero, right? So this is, oops, <laughs> right? That's the velocity that goes with your parachute didn't open. <laughs> that one's not good. How's the velocity that goes with the parachute opening go? You start falling, right? You taper out at terminal velocity, and then what happens? Slow down. Until yeah, then you pull the ripcord, right? The chute opens, and you slow down. Right? Velocity drops off. Do you... What else happens? What happens next? Then you hit the ground. Well, you, you, you slow down only so much. Yeah, you slow down until you hit the terminal velocity for the parachute being open. Yeah, okay, that's what that line is right there, right? Wait, see that? Oh, no, that's just the initial slowdown. Okay, so you'll slow down until you hit terminal velocity for the parachute being open. You guys see that? Then you hit the ground. <coughs> and then assuming, yeah, assuming the ground comes up, then you'll drop to zero. You guys see that? Look at Meg, you're kind of running and slowing down, so it probably just be yeah, and so it might taper off gently. It sort of depends on how hard you hit the ground. That looks like right? you just slapped the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends on how close these things are, right? Like if you hit the ground going one mile an hour, that's not that big a hit. If you hit the ground going 400 miles an hour, that's a pretty big hit. <laughs> you guys see that? There's a work thing. There's a bunch of physics there. But the idea I want you to have is that piecewise functions are good for kind of major changes in the system. Right, so there's a big difference between me falling and when I've hit terminal velocity, and an even bigger difference between me falling and when the parachute's open. You guys with me on that? Yeah. 